<laughs> there you go, you heard it here first. Thanks for being with us, everyone. Look forward to seeing you next time on The Chase Australia. Tonight, the LNP's border ultimatum, reopen or ruin tourism. The bright idea is to revamp the sugar city. Mackay's drug crime soars and calls to freeze rates for farmers. Across Mackay, the Sundays, and the Coalfields, this is 7 News with Joanne Desmond. Good evening, thanks for joining us. The Shadow Tourism Minister has slammed the Premier, claiming Queensland's border needs to open to interstate travel to revive the Mackay and Whitsunday tourism industry. But Anastasia Palaszczuk is not backing down on the battle of the border. Tourism operators are on their knees as the global health crisis cripples the industry. Seeing the whites of people's eyes has rocked me to the core. There's a level of pain that I didn't think I'd see. And for many, it follows a difficult few years. We came from a very low base after Cyclone Debbie, after numerous shark attacks, after the bushfires that damaged the global reputation that Australia had. The state opposition has now reignited calls to open the border and market Mackay and the Sundays to interstate travellers. I would like to think that the 20th of June would present a golden opportunity for us. That's two weeks from the rallies we saw across the country. But the Premier isn't seeing the same tune. I have made it absolutely clear that we'll be looking at that at the end of the month as we enter stage three. CEO of Mackay Tourism, Taz Weber, wants the border battle resolved. But he says businesses will need at least two weeks' notice to start marketing and COVID-safe training. It's important that if we do open things back up again, that we don't have to reclose. So for, for things to open up, let's get it done and done, done, done properly first time. Ashley Dwan, 7 News. While we wait for the border to open, the Mayor is looking closer to home, calling on private investors to help revitalise key areas of the city. Mackay Council is hoping to turn five hubs into entertainment precincts, which would potentially include a brewery and a wharf. Locals are begging for a fresh start. Should have been done years ago. I think it'd be good. Yeah, we need all the attractions we can get, yeah. Five areas across the city will soon be built up with new cafes, restaurants and a distillery, among other interests. Council is calling on private investors for ideas. Right now, you know, this is us saying we want our skin in the game we want developers to, uh, to come and talk to us. It's part of the Mayor's grand plan to bring more people to Mackay, keep locals local and boost tourism in the region. This is a long-term project. We can't do it on our own. We need the development industry, we need investors to come to Mackay. If you're wanting to be part of it, we've got some leverage here on the land that we own. If all goes to plan, the area behind me will be the first in Mackay to be redeveloped, creating the city's new waterfront precinct. We need to be able to activate that river. We need to be able to make that river a part of our community. That first phase is still a few years off and the entire project could take up to 10 years. Kaziah Dawn, 7 News. A Collinsville man accused of shooting another man in the stomach has been granted bail. 26-year-old Jacob Bocamp appeared via video link in the Bowen Magistrates Court charged with attempted murder. It's alleged he shot a 29-year-old Collinsville man with a stolen gun just over a week ago after an argument broke out at his house. His case has been adjourned until September 1. New crime statistics have shown a dramatic drop in property crime, break and enters and car theft in Mackay for the month of May. But after a weekend of stolen car chases, locals are having trouble seeing the bright side. This was the moment a two-day stolen car joyride came to an end. Police stopped the grey Toyota Hilux with tyre spikes in North Mackay. Two men aged 19 and 28 years old were arrested and charged. Less than a day earlier, another stolen car chase was brought to a dramatic end only streets away. We had two juveniles arrested in relation to that and uh, they've since been charged with a number of burglary and unlawful use offences. All were known to police. The incidents occurred on the same weekend that four teenagers were killed driving a stolen car in Townsville. The grief that is caused by poor decisions can be long-lasting and, and regardless of what those four young people were doing at the time, their families are going to suffer that event for a long time. While the scourge of deadly driving remains, Mackay Police are reporting a decrease in other offences for May. There's been some marked reductions 
in our what we class as our unlawful entry offences, so that's burglaries, breaking enters into shops and businesses and also car theft. They say it's a result of a crackdown on known offenders and home isolation from the pandemic. We've got more people in their homes, we've got more eyes and ears telling police what's going on. While property crime has gone down, drug offences are up by nearly 60%. Police say this is a result of the closure of three major drug operations this month, including yesterday where a 42-year-old grass tree woman was arrested and charged with drug trafficking. Police found $8,000 cash, methamphetamine, cocaine and cannabis while searching the house. If we can dismantle them one by one, then that's our aim. When it's affecting a community, it's a scourge. Laura Lavelle, 7 News. Cane growers are calling on Mackay Council to freeze rates for a year after some land valuations went up by as much as 200%. But Mayor Greg Williamson says it's simply impossible with this year's budget already horrid thanks to COVID-19. Cane growers across the region are bracing for large rate rises after their land valuations came back higher than expected. There's been uh, increases in valuations around the Mackay Regional Council area of uh, 47% up to a mass of 200%. Cane Growers Mackay Chairman Kevin Borg says the organisation is objecting to the increases and is asking for a reprieve from Council while they raise their issues with the Valuer-General. We are required to raise rates every year by, uh, by law based on the valuations. We don't do the valuations. Mr Borg says the land valuations haven't taken into account the low sugar prices and they'd assumed Nordzucker's purchase of Mackay sugar would be positive. Rates freezing is, uh, is an impossibility under the law. We can't, we can't freeze a rate. But Mayor Greg Williamson says councillors already have the difficult task of delivering a budget this year following the COVID-19 pandemic. It's going to be a pretty horrid budget to, to, to bring down because of COVID. Now revenues disappeared in a lot of areas. Danielle De Pinto, 7 News. A Queensland toddler who has been defying the odds since birth is again in the battle of her young life. Isabel Burgess was born at just 28 weeks old with a lung disease, which has left her extremely vulnerable during the COVID crisis. Isabel Burgess wasn't breathing when she was born. She had to be resuscitated, put on a ventilator and spent six weeks in the intensive care unit. Her parents could barely breathe either for fear of losing their little girl. In the days that you watch her stop breathing, you start to wonder whether this is the last day you get to spend with your daughter. What a difference a year makes. She's a little fighter. But this 14-month-old with the big personality has a lung disease and is highly susceptible to viral infections. So when COVID-19 reached Queensland, the Burgess family went into isolation. I feel like the social distancing has saved Isabel's life. Playtime was enjoyed through a window. It's meant that family can still see her and um, she doesn't have to spend time forgetting who they all are. After being in lockdown since March, the family is now looking to venture out a little. Because I don't want her to feel like she's the girl in the bubble that no one can play with. The family's message to the public is simple. Be respectful, keep your distance and stay at home if you're sick. You just don't know the other person's story. You just don't know the other person's health status. Christy and Stephen are grateful to those who do abide by the restrictions, even writing a letter of appreciation to the Premier because it means that we didn't have to watch our daughter go through that again. And it means they can enjoy more precious moments like this. Carissa Kemp, 7 News. Hey, tonight in 7 News, a new initiative to improve laundry services for the homeless. And 60 years on from Australia's worst air disaster. They're coming. Descending from the heavens, another four housemates. What is going on here? With a new challenge and a new eviction. You flirting with me again? No. <laughs> okay, sorry. New Big Brother, tonight, 7.30 on 7. Patio World has never been more ready to transform your home, so let's do a deal. Let's do a deal on patios, carports, aluminium decking, shutters, louvers, room enclosures and more. Let's do a deal and change your lifestyle without changing your address. Call now. 
CF Moto UTV range only at the JG Center. Super tough. Loaded with features and offering outstanding value for money. From the U-Force 550 through to the amazing Z-Force 1000. We dare you to compare. CF Moto UTVs only at the JG Center. If you're an NDIS participant, MCVA can get you involved and accompany you to activities and events within the local community. Go to our website and start feeling wonderful. You got a friend. knows it's possible to have a big global reputation and a big heart my uni is ranked in the top two percent worldwide is recognized around the world for social innovation quality teaching and lots more if it's time to make some decisions talk to my uni the uni that believes we all have the right to a world-class education fantastic support and a career that counts be what you want to be with CQ University Get a healthy, beautiful smile at Rosemary Kirkland Dental. Full restorative dental care, as well as cosmetic dentistry and implants. Make an appointment now, Rosemary Kirkland Dental, Gordon Street, Mackay. No cooking tonight, let's go to Hot Walk. Hot Walk! Two great locations offering takeaway options of amazing Asian cuisine. Hot Walk McAllister Street or Hot Walk Express Noodle Bar, Victoria Street. Hot A warning, there is graphic content here. Collingwood fans! <laughs> New Front Bar, tonight on 7. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? Mackay turns to 7 News to keep up to date on local issues. And we want you to be part of it. If there's something happening in your street, your suburb, we want to know about it. Send us a message or drop us an email. Thanks for joining us here on 7. Mackay Regional Council has hosted a small but solemn ceremony to remember 29 people who died when a TAA flight crashed in the area 60 years ago. The tragedy and the crash mystery revolutionised the way flights attract, leading to the invention of a black box. June 10, 1960 will forever be a dark day in aviation history. Australia's first Fokker Friendship aircraft, en route from Rockhampton, crashed into the sea after making three attempts to land at Mackay Airport. We really can't let this day go by without marking this occasion. 29 lives were lost, including nine boys returning from boarding school in the country's equal worst civil air incident. And I don't think to this day we ever have quite uh, worked out what has happened because there was very little tracking. As a result, Australia became the first country to mandate cockpit voice recorders, now known as black boxes. And every year, Mackay remembers the price that was paid. Councillors and locals laid wreaths and stopped for a minute's silence. The captain of the aircraft was Frank Pollard. The first officer was Gordon Davis. The air attendants were June Hamilton and Mary Wilmer. Rockhampton Grammar School held their own service locally after COVID restrictions meant they couldn't travel north. Saw the loss of nine young lives from the school and it's an important thing to remember those who have attended the school and those who have left an indelible mark and certainly the accident is one of those occasions. Kazaya Dawn, 7 News. The first Orange Sky Laundry Pod was switched on in Serena overnight as part of a pilot service helping homeless people across the area. Each pod houses three washers, three dryers and six chairs so people can wait for their clothes. Two mates started the mobile laundry service as a way to help Australia's homeless population feel better about themselves. If successful, the free pods will be placed permanently at different locations across the country. A new central Queensland-based mental health program aims to support farmers struggling with the hardships of drought and the pandemic. A network of land leaders has been trained to deliver on-the-spot care for isolated outback communities. Queensland farmers are amongst the first to bear the economic brunt of natural disasters, but they're often the last to seek help when times get tough. That's why Central Queensland's Fitzroy Basin Association is leading the way with mental health support for families in remote areas. Um, they don't really have 
uh, sometimes the networks to be able to talk and communicate how they feel. Recent statistics reveal male farmers are dying from suicide at about twice the rate of other Australian men. CQ land leaders have been trained to recognise when someone is struggling. So if they're normally very social and they're starting to retreat or pushing people away or becoming maybe more dependent on substances. Us recognising the symptoms and going out in the paddock or talking to them on the phone, we can help them and guide them in the right direction. Their support services extend through central Queensland's Fitzroy region, catering for more than 115,000 people. They hope the initiative will grow if more Queensland regions get on board. If people know that it's OK to open up and express how they're feeling, then, then they're more likely to get help. Because a simple conversation can change a life. Isla Stanich, 7 News. All right, time now to have a look at sport with Nath and the NRLW will take place this year. It will, Joe. That means we'll get to see players like Mackay's Brittany Braley in action in a four-week season starting September. Details next. And more on crowds at NRL games as a Cowboys veteran backs the club's young guns to shine on Friday night. Hi everyone, Courtney Rolston here sharing another one of my favourite recipes with you from my home. Now I've got a spring in my step because this week the footy is back. Now for me one of the best things to enjoy while watching the game is the good old Aussie beef pie. My delicious pie uses great value everyday ingredients. This pie will easily feed eight people and at around three dollars per serve it is fantastic value. All right to kick things off we need to heat some extra virgin olive oil in a pan. And I've got a large brown onion that I've just diced up, three or four carrots that I've just grated up. While the carrots are cooking off, I'm just gonna run some celery through the grater as well. Give that a good season with some salt. All right, celery, onion, carrots are all softened down, smelling delicious. Just gonna transfer them into my actual pie tin here. So I've got a couple of packs of Coles beef mints, great value for a pie. And I'm making a big pie because there's nothing better than leftover pie the next day. So I've got a kilo of beef mints. I'm gonna put a good seasoning of black pepper in because I love black pepper in my pie. Give it a little pinch of sea salt, break up the beef until it's beautiful and browned off. About three tablespoons of tomato paste. Now if you're asking what makes this an Aussie beef pie, I've got a secret little ingredient and that is some Vegemite. All right, a couple of other key ingredients some Worcestershire sauce. We need some corn flour, and this is gonna kind of thicken down and give us that beautiful gravy that we love in a pie. All right, I'm now going in with about a cup and a half of beef stock. Look at that, our little filling is blipping away over here. It is smelling so good. So our celery, onion, carrots goes back in with the mince. That's it. All I need to do now is to transfer our mixture into our pie tin, and we're gonna let it cool slightly before we put on our pastry. Tuck in our corners. So I've just got a beaten up egg and I'm just going to brush this over our pastry. Poke a little hole in the top of the pastry. All right, now my oven is set at 200 degrees. This is going to take around 25, 30 minutes until you see that beautiful golden crust on the pie. Let's dig into that pastry. Look at that. I've got some peas just for some greenery and I've got some homemade ketchup. You guys are going to love this one, I promise. For this, and loads more what's for dinner recipes, head over to coles.com.au and as always, go the swans. Tonight's board report brought to you by Commercial Mine Recyclers now at 64 Elvin Street Pageant. Welcome back to 7 News. As reported earlier, the Cowboys could be back playing in front of thousands of North Queensland supporters when they battle the Roosters at home on July 9. But the players' immediate focus is the Warriors on Friday night, with Jason Taumalolo facing one final fitness test tomorrow. A barnstorming Jason Tamalolo in high definition is mesmerising. Tamalolo, too strong from close range. But nothing quite replaces seeing the Tongan superstar in person. And North Queenslanders don't have to wait much longer. On July 9, the Cowboys hope to have 3,500 supporters in the stands. We're going through all of the plans for those individual stadiums at the moment. For now, the focus is getting Tamalolo back on the park. An integral part of their, you know, their footy, footy club. Our expectations that Jason will travel down and play. He needs to make it through tomorrow's captain's run. Is it harder without Jace? Yes, he's the greatest player that's ever played in the middle of the field, so obviously it makes the job a little bit harder, but you know, we had a lot of 
a lot of talent in this team. Including 18-year-old debutante Hamaso Tabawai Fido. Hopefully we can make it a, you know, a challenging you know, challenging night for them and challenging night for, um, for the Cowboys. It'll be Tom Gilbert's second NRL match. He's definitely a first grader. He's a player of the future. And um, I was just very pleased for him. That's one of many. Um, he's going to have a very long career. Every minute on the park is valuable. The hardest part about being a first grader is playing every week at a high level and, and backing it up. And that's something that uh, time, time only takes time, you know, and, and being out there in the heat of the battle. Though there is admiration for Friday night's opponents. What they have done is, and, and move away from their families is big commitment, massive commitment to, to keep, the, keep the comp running. Meanwhile, while the Gold Stars will have to wait until 2021 to play again, those in the NRLW will have a competition this year after it was given the green light to return in September. Jessica Stewart, 7 News. The NRLW season has been confirmed to go ahead in September in a shortened four-week competition. And Mackay's Brittany Braley is set to wear the big red V of St George Illawarra, while her former Broncos team will contain a number of central Queensland products. She'd much rather be back on the field now than September, but at this rate, any footy's better than none. Uh, we're sort of still keeping fit, but not knowing whether we're going to play or not is sort of a bit of a dampener, but um, now that we know we are playing, it's definitely going to amp the training up. Last night's announcement of a four-round four-team NRLW comp music to the ears of Tamika Upton. Um, it was up in the air for a little bit there with coronavirus, but um, it's good that the NRL have got the women's game up and running. None of last year's players are currently contracted to the club, but you can almost guarantee Tamika, as well as Gladstone's Chelsea Baker, will be wearing Broncos colours in September. Still been in talks with the Broncos. Um, I still really want to go there, so hopefully it all works out. It's still a while away, but it looks like Queensland games could still be behind partially closed doors. In terms of larger crowds, as has been foreshadowed by, I understand, one of the codes, uh, that uh, may not be until, uh, until sometime down the track. At least the girls can begin training with purpose. I guess just to sort of have to start contact um, here at home and then ease into it with pre-season. Um, but yeah, with such a big break, I think we're all going to be feeling it. I sort of just want to cement a spot, I guess. Um, I played uh, wing and fullback. Um, wherever they need me to play, hopefully I can cement a spot. Connor Rose, 7 News. And Mackay Basketball is anxiously awaiting for the final approvals of its COVID safe plan before players can start training again. The state government approved the plans for indoor sports late last week, but they also need a green light from council. The new Mackay Multisport Stadium can now seat up to 1,150 fans and with just three active cases of coronavirus now in Queensland, it's believed more spectators will be allowed at events from Stage 3, which is scheduled to begin July 10. If our health response in Queensland continues to be as strong as it currently is, um, I, cannot, I cannot see uh, any reason why uh, more people will not be allowed to go into stadiums and sporting events across Queensland. Townsville Juniors recently started training together for the first time in more than two months. They're having to adhere to strict protocols, including staying in separate zones and not mixing with other teams. Just great to see them back out in the court, though, Joe. Hopefully yeah, Mackay's not yeah. too far behind. There's some good news on the horizon. Yep. All right, stay, stay with us after the break. Livia will have all the details on the weather for us. Welcome to our new shed at 64 Elvin Street. And as you can see, new machinery. We'll be specialising in copper insulated wire here. I'll pay you more for your copper insulated wire here than anywhere else in Northern Queensland, and that's guaranteed. Husqvarna has a wide range of robotic mowers for every size and shape of lawn. Upgrade your everyday with the intelligent Husqvarna Auto Mower. Drop into your local participating Husqvarna dealer today. Total Tools Tax Time Catalog is out now. Sigweld Weld Skill, 185 Inverter Welder, only $749. Score a free TTI tool trolley when you buy a TTI chest tool kit. Total Tools, every tool for every trade, guaranteed. 
DGH Engineering requires staff for the Mackay, Emerald and Bowen Basin regions. If you're a qualified supervisor, boilermaker, rigger, fitter or TA, we want to hear from you. Send resumes to jobs at dghengineering.com.au. You've been seeing me on your screen for a while now. Just goes to show, we're here to stay. If you'd like to see the same dentist each time you visit, Paul and I are here for you. Come and get the conversation started at Paul Lang Dental. Harvey Norman, your premium Optus dealer. Receive a $700 Harvey Norman gift card when you sign up to a new service on the Optus $65 per month SIM only plan for 24 months with 80 gigabytes of data for use in Oz. That's right. Sign up to a new service on the $65 per month 24 month Optus SIM only plan and you'll receive a $700 Harvey Norman gift card. Offer ends June 30. New services only, not available with other offers. Harvey Norman, your premium Optus dealer. You're relying on our network more, so we're accelerating the rollout of Telstra 5G, giving more people and businesses access to fast download speeds in more places than ever. They're the Aussie television moments that took our breath away. You're coming with me. The characters we love. I'm a better man for knowing you. I love you. Love you. The greatest shows are all here. Streaming for free on 7 Plus. This weather report brought to you by Ozcare. Feels like home. Good evening, Livia Regano. Tonight's weather. We're moving into a phase of inclement weather, as the British would say. Definitely not cold, but quite glum with heavy cloud and sporadic rain flurries as we head into the weekend. The steady maritime airstream is keeping our temperatures about average. I'm surprised our nights aren't warmer, actually. Today's temp range in Mackay was 12 to 23 degrees. Let's look at the satellite loop. Now, the tables have turned just a little bit since yesterday in that most of the cloud and shower activity is now in the southern half of the state, although we are continuing to see coming a few coming ashore on the tropical coast in the more exposed parts, not including Townsville, of course. But over the next two, three days, we'll see cloud enveloping the whole state, not just on the coast and inland, and there'll be steady showers. This is today's chart. Now, we've still got that same high in the Tasman Sea. It's moving offshore and out towards New Zealand a bit. But this offshore trough, which is being induced by an upper level trough, is continuing to bring a pretty uh, tightly packed pressure pattern, bringing an onshore stream that's got lots of moisture and being lifted by that approaching upper trough. On tomorrow's chart, the upper trough reaches maturity, so there'll be quite a lot of shower activity in the southern half of the state. Not so much in the north, it'll be our one OK day. And then on the outlook chart, as the next system approaches from the west, it'll be a long way. Once it gets here on the weekend, there'll be rain for everybody. Yeah, now the latest from the Weather Bureau. The boating forecast for Mackay waters, south to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots tomorrow. A little bit lighter on Friday, not much. But then by Saturday, we're down to just 10 to 15 knots southeast to northeasterly. Our first high tomorrow morning will be a low, followed by a moderate high water peak later in the day. The full moon's long gone now, so the tidal swing's forever diminishing. The central coast and Sundays, slight chance only of a coastal shower tomorrow. That'll be the best day in the series. Mackay 14 to 24 degrees, Bowen 27, Proserpine 26, Central Highlands and Coalfield. Some early fog, then partly cloudy but no rain, 27 for Emerald, Claremont and Moorumbah 26. Looking ahead for Mackay, I've picked a rotten weekend for a picnic to celebrate my mum's birthday, but hopefully the showers will start clearing from about Tuesday next week as it gets a little cooler. Tonight's photo was brought to you by David Gardner, a close-up of cirrocumulus cloud over Babinda. These pure ice clouds are among the highest in our skies. You can tell by the small size of the lumps, indicating they must be very far away. Thanks, David, and thank you all. Enjoy this Wednesday evening, and I'll catch you again tomorrow. Now it's back to the team. Great, thanks for that, Livio. That's all from us for this Wednesday. Thanks very much for your company. Now, a reminder, you can enjoy a replay of our news and also the National Bulletin from 6.30 over on 7.2. From all of us here, good night.
tonight on 7 News, Miracle on the Mountain. Thank you, everyone. I, I'm, no, I'm so grateful. Jubilant scenes as an autistic boy lost in freezing Victorian wilderness is found alive. A setback for Queensland businesses challenging the border ban, but fresh hope the standoff will be settled by the end of the month. And the kiss that's caused a COVID controversy for the NRL. Live from Brisbane, 7 News with Sharon Gadella and Max Butcher.